What's your name spelled? Jeffrey Herbstman. J E F F R E Y H E R B S T M A N. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, sir, did you know somebody by the name of Samantha Wool? Yes. And how long uh, how long had you known Ms. Wool? For years. Um, can you approximate uh, the number of years that you that you knew of her? Um, at least five, maybe perhaps longer than that. We met through the synagogue. Um, yeah, uh, I, 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 a, a long time ago. Yeah. Okay. And um, was this the uh, the downtown synagogue in Detroit? That's correct. Um, and um, at some point, uh, <coughs> did your uh, Relationship with Miss Wool become uh, romantic. Yes. And um, approximately when did, did that happen? Uh, in August of uh, 2022, um, we started a romantic relationship. Okay. And um, how long did your romantic relationship with Miss Wool last? Uh, until uh, July of 2023. Okay. And during the the time that the two of you were uh, together, did you did you live together or live separately? Live separately, and um, what uh, what sort of what precipitated the the ending of your relationship in July of twenty twenty three? We we had uh, difficulty communicating. Um, uh, I I'm not particularly good at sharing my feelings, and um, it. it caused a uh, stress between us and um, you know we really wanted to make things work but I, I just I, I didn't know how and um, when the two of you broke up who initiated uh, who initiated the breakup um, so uh, Samantha initiated the breakup okay and um, after the two of you broke up um, was there ever any effort to uh, rekindle things or get back together? Yes, several times. Um, and did you ever uh, end up getting back together and getting back into a relationship with, with Samantha? Yes, yes. Um, and, and when did that happen? Um, so uh, initially the, the breakup was just a conversation where she, she came to me and said that she wanted to end things. We, we, we uh, had a long conversation and um, got back together the next, or that, that day. Um, subsequently, uh, it lasted for a few hours until I came and brought flowers and apologized and, um, yeah, we trying to figure things out. And then um, uh, the third time, uh, she, uh, she wrote me a text message, and I, I said that I understood, and, and um, that was that was the third time that we broke up. Okay. And um, the the sort of three times that you broke up, what was the sort of time frame of all three of these sort of instances? Um, that was over June and July. Okay. And um, after the final time um, in July, was was there any sort of effort or discussion at that point about possibly getting back together? Yes. Uh, in late July, uh, Sam came to me um, wanting to uh, get back together. Um, I, I told her I had to think about it. Uh, we met for coffee, and I, I said that, um, you know, I, I really... I... I care deeply for her, but I, I wasn't sure how to give her what she wanted in the relationship, and so I really needed to figure that out before we could um, before we could we, we could continue the relationship. And, and so I, I said that um, you know it's it's, it's not going to work. Um, and, and, and after after that point in July, um, did the two of you ever sort of rekindle things at all afterward? No. Now, th this breakup um, w was it? Um, was this like an acrimonious breakup? Would you say? No, it was. Uh, you know, our, our, we we 
talked about things. It was very um, uh, what's the opposite of acrimonious? It was um, we just we, we we talked over things and agreed that that things weren't working very well. That our communication wasn't great, and um, we. Um, decided that things weren't working out. Um, after, I guess after this happened, when, when was the last time you you directly spoke with um, Sam in person? Um, the last time was at uh, there was a, a holiday called Simchat Torah on October seventh, um, and and I we exchanged hellos at that holiday. But that's the, the last time that we saw each other. Okay, and where where was that? Was this at that was at the downtown synagogue? At the synagogue. Yes. Okay. And other than exchanging hellos, um, did, was there any sort of discussion or conversation? No. Um, and between July, um, when the two of you broke up, and um, and the holiday um, in October, was was there sort of any direct in person interaction between the two of you during that during that sort of interim time? Um, we saw each other several times at synagogue. Uh, I remember that um, I saw her at the grand reopening uh, party that we had, uh, the block party that we had on, I believe it was August 25th, and she came over and gave me a hug. Um, and uh, we exchanged hellos at, uh, I think we saw each other at services other than that, but um, that was that was our. We, we didn't really uh, speak outside of those situations. Okay, and during this time, um, after you broke up, were, were the two of you ever still in communication with each other over text or, or phone? Um, I believe that uh, very very minimally. I I texted her when I brought her um, her things back to her apartment and um, I texted her. Uh, she, she brought over um, a book and cupcakes for, for my birthday. Um, and when, when was that? That was August 12th. Okay. And, and so I thanked her for that. Uh, and, and when was the very last time that you saw uh, Samantha alive? That would have been on October 7th at the at the synagogue tour service. Okay, at the synagogue. Yes. Okay. And um, at, at some point, did you find out that something happened to Samantha? Yes, I, I received an email from the synagogue. And um, when did you receive that email? On uh, uh, I believe October 22nd. Okay. Do you remember what time you received that email and found out? Uh, sometime in the afternoon. And what did you do in response to um, getting that email? Um, the first thing I did was I, um, I, I looked at the news to try to understand what had happened. Um, I just, I was, I, I was devastated. I, I wanted to know um, what went on. Uh, I, I called my parents um, and then uh, I reached out or I can't remember if I reached out to some friends, but her friends reached out to me. But I spoke with uh, Ruby Robinson, and Zach Rosen, um, uh, about about what had happened. And are those two individuals? Are those um, are those friends of yours? Yes. Okay. Um, and, and did those individuals know Samantha? Yes. Um. Now, um, was there a funeral service held for Samantha? Yes. And when was that? funeral service out? Uh, that was, uh, was it the 20, 23rd, I think? I, I'm not, I'm not, it was the, the following day. Okay. Do you remember what day of the week, uh, of the week it was? It would have been the Sunday. The Sunday, okay. And um, did you attend the, the funeral service? Yes. And um, after the funeral service, um, did you um, have an opportunity to um, speak with some police officers uh, with the Detroit Police Department? Yes, I did. And um, where did you where did you speak with those officers? 
uh, at the um, at the uh, DPSH downtown. Okay, and um, did um, did those officers um, ask to take uh, something called a, a swab for, for DNA from you? Yes, they did. And did you allow them to uh, take that swab? Uh, I not only allowed it, I, I reminded them they, they were actually going to let me go and, and forgot to uh, swap me. And so I, I said, hey, don't you, don't you need to, to swap me for, uh, for DNA? Okay, and did you, um, did you bring your cell phone with you to that meeting with the police officers? Yes, I did. Um, and did, um, did those officers ask for permission to uh, forensically download the contents of your cell phone? Yes, they did. And did you give them your phone so that they could do that? I did. And um, did, um, did those officers also ask for um, your permission to look in your car? Yes. And um, what kind of car uh, were you driving at that time? A Volkswagen EOS. Okay. And um, during sort of all the relevant time, is that the same car that you yes. had? Yes. Um, and did you allow the officers to look inside of your car? Yes. And search it? Um, and did those officers um, ask you questions about your your sort of whereabouts uh, the night of Samantha's death? Yes, they did. Um, and, and looking back at um, the night of October 20th of 2023, a Friday night, um, can you help us understand what were your activities that specific night? Um, so uh, on that night, I went to the synagogue, um, and I stayed at the synagogue. I, uh, we, we, we prayed. Um, I stayed at the synagogue until uh, around 8 o'clock p.m., and then I went directly home. And what, um, where, where is home for you without, uh, I guess, giving us your specific address? What, what neighborhood and what street do you live? Sure, Southwest Detroit, I live on Grand Boulevard. Okay, and um, so you said you went from synagogue um, to home. Let yeah. me ask, is um, uh, Friday night, uh, as a general matter, is that a, is that a significant night for, uh, in terms of like activities at the synagogue? Yes, yeah, so uh, typically we have services on Friday nights and Saturday mornings. Okay, and um, do you, um, do you observe the the sort of religious custom generally known as, as Shabbat um, in terms of uh, activities uh, that you might you know take a rest from 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 sundown on Friday until sundown on Saturday? Yes, I I, um, I try not to do uh, work or, or labor during that time. Um, are you? Um, do you, do you take your observance to the level that you don't use any electronic devices during that time? No. Okay, and so do you still use uh, things like um, phone, computer during during that time? Yes, I do. Okay. And um, so when you got home on the night of October 20th of 2021, what did you, what did you do that when you got home? Um, after I got home, I would have let my dog out. Um, I uh, lay down on the couch. I listened to a podcast. Um, I put on some records, and I went to bed around ten o'clock. And during um, during the course of that night, um, did you did you leave your home at all? No. Do you remember waking up at all during the course of that night? I believe that I woke up at some point during the night. I'm a light sleeper. Okay. But did you did you leave your home? Did you go anywhere else other than no. other than at home? Um, and um, do you remember um, do you remember what you did the next morning? Yes. Uh, the next morning, I woke up around eight o'clock in the morning. Um, I went to Eastern Market, um, picked up some some groceries and some food. Uh, I drove back home, um, and, and then I, um, I, I, I got my uh, yoga uh, equipment, and I went to, I actually went to the, um, the credit union, I tried to go to the credit union, which was closed, um, and so uh, 
uh, instead I just drove straight to yoga and um, did yoga at 10, I believe 10.30 to 11.30. Okay. And um, Mr. Herbson, can I ask, um, do you have a, a history of suffering from any sort of mental health issues? Yes, I have depression. And um, how, how long have you been um, dealing with say uh, it's been a long time um, I'd say at, at, uh, at least 10 years if not longer okay um, and during the course of time that you've Probably been dealing with, with depression um, have you been um, treated by a, a, a physician um, when it comes to your depression yes I've been treated by a number of uh, psychologists and psychiatrists and um, at the time of uh, Samantha's death, were you, were you treated by anybody at around that time? Yes. And um, at around that time, um, let me ask you this. In, in general, have you ever taken any type of uh, prescription medication um, for uh, depression? Yes, I've taken a, a number of uh, prescription medications for depression. Okay. And um, back in October of 2023, were you on any prescriptions at that time? October of 2023, yes, I was on uh, Trintelix and Rixalti. And can you say that first one again? Trintelix. Trintelix? Yes. And could you spell that for, for the record? T-R-I-N-T-E-L-L-I-X. And how long have you been um, taking that uh, um, particular medicine? I've been taking that for years. And was that something that was prescribed to you? Yes. Okay. Um, and at around the time of October of 2023, were there any sort of changes in um, your prescription or the amount of, uh, is it Tritolix that you were taking? Yes, yeah, so um, I, uh, I wasn't really getting any relief from the Tritolix, so my uh, psychiatrist recommended that I uh, try a new medication. Okay. And um, what was the, the new medication that you um, that you were taking so or that you recommended to take? A medication called Avality. 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 A U V E L I T Y. And um, so, at around the the period of October twenty first of two thousand twenty three, were you on one medication or both medications? Um, I believe. I was uh, uh, only on the Trintelix at that time. And is that something that you're able just to quit cold turkey, or did you have to kind of wean yourself off of that before changing medications? No, there was a specific regimen that I um, I was following to wean myself off of the Trintelix and to ramp up the, the Avelity. Okay, and then at what point in time um, did you start taking the Avelity? Um... It would have been sometime either, uh, I'm not certain of the date, but late October or, or early November. Okay, and had it, have you ever taken that medication uh, before that particular time? No. Um, when you started taking the medication, um, did you have any side effects from that medication? Initially, no. Okay. Um, and... Um, I want to ask you about um, a particular date, November 7th of 2023. Do you remember that date? Yes. Um, and where where were you on that specific day? Um, on, on that day, I was in Kalamazoo, Michigan. And um, what brought you to uh, Kalamazoo? Um, <coughs> so uh, typically, I work remotely from um, from home. Um, however, uh, because of what had been going on in my life, I, um, my, um, my supervisor had suggested that maybe it would be better if I was around people for, for a few days, and so he invited me to go and, um, and work uh, on-site 
at the at the Kalamazoo office. And um, where where did you um, where did you work um, at that particular time? What was the, uh, the uh, employer? A company called Stryker. And and what did you um, what did you do for Stryker at that time? So I was a data scientist. So I was working with um, data that would come off of uh, hospital beds to try and. Um, prevent conditions like uh, bed sores to prevent falls from occurring um, in, in hospital conditions. Okay, and um, where were you staying um, on November 7th when you were um, at Kalamazoo? I was staying at a hotel, the Four Points Sheraton. And um, when you were at the Sheraton um, on the night of November 7th, um, can, you, can you explain to the jury what, what happened that night? Sure. Um, so I, I, f I finished work uh, that day. I checked into the hotel. Um, I took the, so at that point, um, I, that was the second day that I was instructed to, um, to double the dosage of authority. So I, I um, increased from, from one pill to two pills. Um, I went out to, to dinner, um, and then I, I came back to the hotel. I uh, sat in my car. I smoked f four hits off of a vape pen. Um, and when you say you smoked, um, what, what substance were you smoking? Canvas. Okay, so would that be marijuana? Yes. Okay. And so um, after you smoked the cannabis, um, did, did something happen at that point? Uh, no, not initially. Um, I, I, I felt fine. I went inside. I bought a sparkling water and went to my hotel room and began listening to a podcast. Um, I began to feel abnormal while listening to the podcast. My thoughts began racing. Um, they soon became what I would describe as, as uncontrollable, that I, I couldn't stop worrying about things. Um, I, initially it was, it was work related, I, I couldn't stop worrying about uh, that I had, I had brought the wrong uh, clothes to work, that I, I wasn't going to make a good impression. Um, I was worrying about having to meet with uh, the director of the program, and um, and then my thoughts um, began to to focus around um, Sam's death, and um, and what specifically, what sort of direction did your thoughts go in at that point in regard to Sam's death? I, I began to believe that I was um, that that I was responsible for her death. That I had somehow um, killed her and, and, and didn't remember uh, doing it, and I, I couldn't shake um, that feeling. And it was it was disturbing to the extreme. Um, I. Began to text. I texted uh, a few friends. Uh, I texted an ER doctor friend uh, about seeing a psychiatrist. I texted another friend that with whom I had spoken about psychiatry treatment. Um, I texted my my psychologist saying that um, I was freaking out, and um, I came to the conclusion that. I needed to, that I was having a panic attack and needed to seek medical treatment. And um, once you reached that conclusion, um, did you call the police? Did you call 911? Um, so, actually, I, I took all of my stuff and, and recognized that, um, that I, I didn't want my things in the hotel, and so I took all of my stuff, put it in the car, went out to the car, and, and I called 911. Okay, and after you called 911, did you have some interaction with the police? Yes. Um, now, the, the particular types of uh, 
thoughts and sensations that you were having during this episode? Had, had anything like that ever happened to you before um, in terms of that type of episode? No. Um, and do you have any... Has anything like that happened since? No. Um, the particular drug that you were on at that time, um, and, and again, remind me what the name of that was. Oh, Velody. Oh, Velody. Um, have you continued taking that drug since this episode happened? No. Um, when did you stop taking a belly? Immediately. And have you had any issues like this since then? No. Um, and um, before before this happened on November 7th, did you ever feel like you were responsible for Samantha's death in no. any way? Are you responsible for Samantha's death in any way? No. Um, do you have any periods of, of blackouts or unaccounted for time um, in any way? No. Okay. Um, and when you spoke with the police, did, did you say some things about feeling responsible for Samantha's death? Yes. Um, and um, you understand that today that you're testifying under something called use immunity, is that correct? That's correct. And is your understanding that uh, that means that for this time that you're sitting in the witness chair that uh, anything you say can't be used against you in a subsequent criminal proceeding? Yes. Um, and you understand that to be entitled to use immunity that you have to be truthful in your testimony? Yes. Um, have you been truthful in your testimony today? Yes. Um, have you had an opportunity to review a recording of the 911 call that you made on November 7th? Yes. And when you reviewed that recording, um, did that recording uh, appear to be a fair and accurate uh, depiction um, uh, or reflection of the actual call that you made back on November 7th um, in Kalamazoo? Yes. Um, and I'm holding what's been marked as proposed exhibit 27. Is it your understanding that that recording is on this disc? Yes. Your Honor, I move to admit proposed exhibit 27. No objection. Proposed 27 will be admitted. We have no questions. Is it more than 15 minutes long? No, Your Honor. The call is approximately seven minutes, and so perhaps we could maybe break after that. Uh, the, the next portion would be the body worn camera video of what you said to the police, and that's going to be a little bit longer. Okay, that might be a good, unless you have questions for him about that call. But. And again, just for the record, publishing exhibit 27. Thank you. 
where were you situated? I was in my car. And uh, where was your car situated? In the parking lot of the Four Points Charity. And um, are you able to recall what was going through your head at the time that you made that call? Sheer panic. I, I, I couldn't catch my breath. My heart was was racing. Um, I was I was terrified. Okay. And um, after you found out about Samantha's death, uh, can you say what if any impact her death had on your mental health? It was it was not good. I was I was devastated. Um, I would. There were days that I I couldn't get out of bed. Um, uh, I wasn't sleeping well. I was. I, I, w I would also sleep in the afternoons. I my sleeping schedule was was all off. Um, I took it very hard. And um, when you spoke with the police back on uh, that Sunday, right after the death, um, your what was your frame of mind like at that time? Uh, I just wanted to be as helpful as possible. Was that an easy position to be in, to be questioned by the police right after your ex-girlfriend had been murdered? It, it, it wasn't easy, but I, I didn't have anything to hide, so I um, wasn't worried. And is this an easy position for you to be in, sitting here today testifying about this call and about the, the video that we're going to see tomorrow? No, this was a very difficult time. And Your Honor, with that, I'll, I, I guess I'll... Good point to break. Yeah. Okay. So we'll break for the day, and uh, we'll resume.